My name is James Hickey. Uh, I'm the Chief Executive of Boards Canon here on the Irish Film Board. Uh, the Irish Film Board is identified as uh, the organisation, the developmental organisation for audiovisual content in, uh, in Ireland by the Creative Capital Report, which is mentioned in your pack. The Creative Capital Report was published in July of this year. It was a report commissioned by the Department of Arts and was designed to come up with a framework for the development of audiovisual content production in Ireland. And uh, I would commend everybody who gets an opportunity to read it. It's a, a wonderful document and it does give a, 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 a marvellous set of proposals and policies uh, to enable the audiovisual uh, industry to develop going, audiovisual production industry to develop going forward. The two main headlines are increasing, uh, creating 5,000 new jobs and add, creating a turnover of uh, 1 billion euro a year, uh, up from 500 million euro a year as the turnover for audiovisual content production in Ireland. Uh, the last uh, session uh, today is, the headline is online copyright protection. And uh, this is where uh, my former career as a lawyer manifests itself slightly, but uh, I'm going to be agnostic as a lawyer at this point in time uh, and leave that to uh, uh, my colleagues on the panel. Uh, the speakers on the panel are uh, Brian Gilligan, who's the Business Development Director of ExtraVision, and I think he has a very interesting presentation in relation to uh, the impact uh, that uh, copyright piracy has in relation to uh, the business uh, uh, that ExtraVision is, and also what he is proposing to do about it and developments going forward. Uh, also on the panel with me is Colin Kavanagh uh, from Arthur Cox Solicitors, who uh, has been, um, who is a uh, head of the media and entertainment group of Arthur Cox, and is a member of the IBEC Audiovisual uh, Federation, as well as IFTA and the International Association of Entertainment Lawyers, from which I have had recently to retire. Um, and lastly, we have uh, on the panel Barbara Gallivan, who's the CEO of Screen Producers Ireland, uh, the representative organisation for uh, independent film, television and animation production companies. And uh, it's an organisation which is uh, working very hard in the area of uh, making sure to look after the interests of independent film and television production companies. Uh, but first up, if I could ask um, uh, Brian uh, to start with the presentation uh, for uh, the audience. Thank you. Hi everybody. Um, I'm the person at ExtraVision charged with developing a profitable video on demand service and uh, to date I've really been struggling with the business case for this and I'm going to talk to you about the reason why or the main reason why for that today um, in the presentation about online copyright protection. Uh, the first is a tiny bit about ExtraVision. We have 160 odd stores in the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. Our turnover now today is split about a third of our revenue comes from rental and about two thirds comes from products that we sell. We have a pretty diversified range of categories now through film, game, electronics, phones and a range of other categories. We employ 1,300 people in Ireland. Um, I suppose the reason that we're all here is that we all see a shift from packaged media to digital. Um, down the bottom we see a graph here. Of, this is one of the many analysts' projections you can find that shows fantastic growth in video on demand. I suppose we all want our share of that. Um, us as content distributors and some of you as content producers, and that's why we're here. Um, in ExtraVision, we have plans to be involved in this. We really see our strength as being around um, marketing film product. We want to interact with our customers in whatever way they want to interact with us, so we want to provide whatever touch points they want and deliver um, the content to them, whatever way they want to consume it. Um, I suppose uniquely for a retailer, we have a, a greater degree of flexibility in our retail property portfolio than most people would have, and that the average term to maturity on our store leases is less than three years. So we have the capacity to reinvent our stores, to move to bigger stores, smaller stores, or different types of locations, whatever we need to do to adjust to meet our customers' needs. So we want to launch a digital um, film service, and we would have done it a long time ago, but it's a, it's a total non-starter from an economic point of view. I mean, you can be certain that a certain level of cost is going to be there, and almost certain that there will be a very, very low level of revenue at the moment. And the reason why is because of digital piracy. It's the real barrier to monetizing content online. I think first we've seen the music market destroyed. Now the same thing is happening to video as broadband speeds have improved. As the networks improve further, the next thing we're going to see, we're going to see exactly the same thing happening to games. So I just want to very quickly look back over what's really happened in the music market. 
I think there'll certainly be a perception that consumption of music has shifted online, but it's not the shift from packaged media to online consumption that's really caused the problems in the music market and for music retailers. Last year was the first year in the States. Um, I don't know if you can see it, it might be a bit too small, but digital revenues exceeded packaged um, media revenues in the States last year for the first year ever, reached 51%. In Ireland, um, digital content sales accounts for only 19% of revenues, packaged media accounts for the balance. So the business in Ireland still isn't digital, it's 81% it's of packaged media. However, the trouble is, that's the value of the Irish music market over the last five years. It's declined substantially, and it is caused by, by a shift from physical to digital. Um, you see in CD sales declined by 90 million euro over the five years from 06 to 2010, but digital has only picked up 11 million of that gap. So there's a decline in the music market of 70, 79 million euro. It's practically halved over the past five years. And again, it's not caused by a shift to iTunes. It's called, the market has just evaporated. There's some effect um, of what they call the singles effect, whereby people buy a couple of tracks where they're previously, digitally, where they previously would have bought an entire album on CD. Um, and the main reason, though, is online piracy. So, you know, that's what's happened um, to music in the past. The same is now happening to film, and game will certainly be next. <coughs> Nearly a quarter of all internet traffic infringes copyright at the moment, and the majority of this is on film um, content. There's a, a large proportion of television content as well, and game is small but growing quick, quickly. But the vast majority of it is on film. So what can be done? Um, some countries have taken different approaches to this and they've had greatly different results. So I suppose the, the, the Swedish market is, is interesting to look at. I suppose it was, it was, there, were, there were two things. The Swedes never had a huge history of piracy in the offline world, um, but they really took to internet piracy when, um, when, when, when it became available to them through decent broadband connections. They liked it a lot, but they, didn't, they weren't really proud of it. Um, and two things happened at, the, at around about the same time that the government introduced some uh, anti-piracy legislation and at the same time there was a pretty high profile court case against the Pirate Bay. So when those two things coincided, you saw a 30% overnight drop in internet traffic in Sweden. Um, CD sales grew by 9% in the first nine months, 2009 in Sweden. And more interestingly, digital music sales grew by 80% in that period. So it really had a huge impact. Um, there was a big switch and people started paying for the content. I suppose the unfortunate thing is that that effect um, was reasonably short-lived because the legislation wasn't actually implemented and the Pirate Bay court case was stalled. So as people realised actually this is not going to happen immediately, um, I'm, I'm not going to have any immediate consequences, they went back to not paying. So to contrast the effect in Sweden, um, so in, in, in Sweden the, the, the the graph on the top right is uh, film revenues in Sweden through a variety of different channels over, over, over a period of time. And it's a pretty healthy market. Um, and the government response to the piracy, um, when, when piracy started to impact the market, has, has, has maintained the health of that market. By contrast, down below, um, the Spanish, a bit like ourselves, um, were enthusiastic pirates um, with car boot sales and all of that sort of stuff, and, and it really took off. Uh, very enthusiastically um, when digital piracy became available to them. Uh, the government took no action and really the market there is in free fall. It's down 58% from its peak in 2003 and there probably isn't any rescuing the Spanish market with action now. Uh, the government now is looking at what action it should take but it, it's probably too late. You'll never restore that value. So I suppose the other argument that we hear a lot is, you know, uh, 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 the, if you build it, they will come. You know, if I had a legitimate alternative and it was good, I would pay. Um, I don't really believe that. There are three pretty good legitimate digital film services in Ireland that have major studio contents. So this is a brand new release. You've got a, the Apple iTunes that everybody knows about. Microsoft and Sony both have um, legitimate services with major studio content, up-to-date releases on um, their games platforms. But in 2010, the total spend ac uh, across these on film content in Ireland was 720,000 euro. It's not a huge market. 65% um, of that was accounted for by iTunes. So why is it so small? Because an awful lot of people don't pay. Um, so how many pay? Internationally, this is a study done by um, a consulting group called Future Source that, that, that's an analyst in the home entertainment, and they just regularly survey. Um, and this is an international survey, so it's the States, the UK, France, and Germany. That's not representative totally, but it gives you an indication. 
So uh, the last survey in December 2010 that they carried out, 21% of people said they always pay for content, that film content for new movies that they download. Um, you've got to take with a pinch of salt the people that say they sometimes pay. You know, does that mean they paid once and then decided they preferred not to pay, or, or what does it mean? So in Ireland, the figures are worse. So this is from our own research that we conducted in Extravision. This is a representative sample of all Irish adults aged over 15. And uh, this was carried out for us um, in September 2010. So 10% of Irish adults said they always paid, and 16% said they sometimes paid. The trouble is, I mean, asking people, you know, do you steal stuff in a research survey? It's a, you know, it's a bit like your doctor asking you how many units of alcohol do you drink in a week? You, you, you tend not to get a totally accurate picture. You know, the truth is, if, if all those people that said they do pay did pay, the market would be worth an awful lot more than the 720,000 that it is, and that figure is real. So the question is, why don't they pay? Well. This was a, another piece of research that we did. This is a focus group that we had carried out for us in April of this year. So what they found, you, the writing's a bit too small to read. I mean, it was you know, hugely popular. Virtually nobody pays. In, 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 in every household, somebody did the downloading. And while not everybody did it themselves, they would, people that didn't would get somebody in the household to do it for them. So why, would, why, did, why did people say they didn't pay? Because it's free, it's easy. It's quick, the quality is good, and you can get TV content as well as films. Um, why didn't they pay? They said absolutely no fear of um, any consequences, they had no guilt about it, and they really, uh, there, was, there was no reason for them not to pay because there just was absolutely no consequences. So the, the, the researchers told us, well look, this is, just, this is only going to grow, there's, there's nothing here to curb it. So where does that bring us? I mean, from our point of view in Ireland, clear that consumption is shifting online at a, at a, at a breakneck speed um, and the problem for us is that in the physical world consumers by and large pay, they don't tend to steal an awful lot of CDs or DVDs. In the digital world by and large people don't pay because they don't have to. They don't feel any guilt and they won't pay unless they're forced to. Um, in this environment it just isn't possible to profitably distribute content. You know, there's, there's a cost to distributing content and there's no way to meet that cost while the alternative is free. Um, and we can see from the international um, examples that it is possible to take effective action. So the government wants a healthy digital economy. They spend on a range of initiatives, content creation, film board, the section 41 reliefs. There's a pretty comprehensive four-fuss game sector plan to um, stimulate development of, of games in Ireland. Um, and you know, it's absolutely laudable that Content creation is, 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 is encouraged and supported, but it's bewildering to me that, that there's no action to take and to protect these investments. I mean, it's clear we have an EU obligation um, to protect copyright, and the High Court has found um, that the legislation is flawed. So we're going to have to fix it. We're going to have to do something at some point. The trouble is, the longer um, we delay here, the harder it's going to be um, to correct things. Um, content is being permanently devalued um, in this country. I suppose the really unfortunate thing um, that was confirmed again by the Minister this morning is there just there is no plan here. So thank you for your attention. I'll leave you on that note.